Crowdsourcing Love is brought to you by First Rounds on Me. First Rounds on Me is a dating app that I love that encourages you to actually go out on dates so you can create a real, genuine connection in person. Rather than trying through a phone screen, First Rounds on Me is great because it cuts out all the small talk and helps you plan your first date. You can only have one date per day and you can only chat with your date 12 hours before your first date starts. No more pen pals. Go out and get to know someone in person. I used First Rounds on Me during my 28 date challenge and it was such a good experience and I loved how efficient it was. Um, And the guys on there are really cute. And it's kind of fun to see the different places they ask you to get drinks. Some guys would ask me to get a smoothie or a coffee. Other people asked me to go and get a cocktail. Um, And it was really low stakes, yet really, really fun. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the very first episode of Crowdsourcing Love. I'm Marin from Life of Marin NYC. I'm so excited to be here and I'm so excited for you guys to listen to this very first episode. It's with the CEO, Mark Moran. He's one of the guys I dated during the challenge. Mark is publicly facing and so he was a pro during this podcast, as you'll hear. Um, He actually originally slid into my DMs after he read my Bloomberg article Um, this past February and our first date was just a drink and then our second date he um, planned a really cute scavenger hunt for Archie and myself around New York City and it was amazing and well executed and then our third date I planned and we go into it in the episode and it was kind of a shit show but Mark was an amazing sport Um, So I'm so excited for you guys to, you know, hear us together. Let me know what you think the vibe is. I mean, we ended up not dating, but he turned out to be a really good friend. But I would love to know if you guys think we have chemistry because after I posted the picture of us last week, everyone was like, oh my god, you guys look so cute together. Um, Yeah, so enjoy and I will talk to you guys all soon. Welcome back to Crowdsourcing Love. I'm Marin and I have Mark Moran with me, CEO of Equity Animal. That's right. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to see you again and to be here. I know. Thanks for coming, mm-hmm. Mark. Um, I want to start out by just learning a little bit more about, you know, who you are, where you're from, mm-hmm. um, how long have you been in New York City? And then I'll go into like your finance bro, turn reality <laughs> star, turn yeah, CEO. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. But first, let's get the background. Sure, sure. So from Virginia originally, okay. uh, I was actually born at the Naval Academy, but grew up mostly in Virginia. Wow. Then um, went to the College of William Mary for undergrad, ran track there. Went to the University of Virginia, got a lot of green MBA there right after undergrad okay. because I always wanted to be a lawyer. So then I took out a bunch of student loans mm-hmm. and was like, oh, shit, how am I going to pay this back? Yep. So then I came up to Wall Street about five years ago, uh, started working at Lazard and then Centerview later. Then uh, long story short, jumped on a show called F Boy Island, which mm-hmm. is probably what most people know me for. And that was the best experience of my life by doing that. Wow. So I'm sure we'll get into that. But totally. did that and then. And decided to um, really come back, start a company that was focused on investor relations, really tapping into younger people, invest in the stock market, Gen Z, millennials, saw the rise of the retail investor. And then here I am today. So it's been a wild past two years almost. I think I came back April 18th. So two years ago from F Boy Island. I'm, okay. uh, I'm an alum now of the island. Wow. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. did you find love on the island? I did not find love on the okay. island. I, I made a lot of great friends yeah. who are still people I am in touch with every day mm-hmm. to this day. But it was uh, it was more an experience for me uh, that I'm very happy I did that it was something I kind of was going that traditional finance bro route, mm-hmm. if you will. Yep. I was uh, I was working a lot of hours. I was in a relationship. Um, um, and I, I kind of felt like I didn't really like the person that I was becoming. Wow. So I kind of took a step back and then was able to, you know, be in a situation where I was fortunate enough that I could take some time off work mm-hmm. and really go. I went to the Cayman Islands for three months during the middle of COVID and just set up this amazing opportunity to really kind of uh, have a reset on life, if you will. Yeah, that's amazing. So you said you didn't like the person you were becoming. Mm-hmm. Who were you becoming? I think I was becoming someone um, 
When you think of traditional finance bros, and you know, I would imagine that you have a very traditional female audience. I have a seventy-eight percent male following, you know, which I'm sure is mostly twenty-two to you know thirty-year-olds in New York City. Mm -hmm. But I, I kind of felt like everyone aspires to be like this uh, idealized version of someone in finance, like a Patrick Bateman type. Okay. And you know, I was someone who, like, when I was interning at Credit Suisse. I was 23 as a summer associate the first time I did it. The first day I get a paycheck, a guy takes me to go buy a pair of Gucci loafers. And I grew up in a very middle class house. And that was like a decent part of the paycheck. But wow. there's kind of this light aspirational lifestyle, if you will, that you ascribe to and you want to live up to. And everyone wants to be intense and all this stuff. And so, you know, I'd go, I'd work a lot, and then I'd drink a lot, and then, mm-hmm. you know, hang out with my friends, hang out with the girl I was dating. And I just felt like, I was becoming kind of less of the version of, I always compare myself to uh, how 19 year old me would think. Mm -hmm. And I felt like I was straying away from that person that I wanted to be. And so this opportunity came about and I didn't know the name of the show at all. I probably wouldn't have done it if I'd known the name of the show. Better that you didn't. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And I was fortunate enough to be able to negotiate a lot of parts of the contract. So like I knew when I was gonna be eliminated, I knew how I'd be portrayed with the show. So I had comfort in going into what was an untitled reality dating show on HBO. Max. Mm -hmm. But um, it was one of those things that I was very hesitant. And it wasn't until maybe a week and a half or two weeks prior to going to the Cayman Islands where it was filmed, that HBO gave me the contract and I kind of had comfort with where things were. So then I told my parents. And, you know, I had been single for like three months at this time. Uh, and I basically, right after I broke, well, my girlfriend broke up with me because I cheated on her, which is something we can get into. Whoa. Um, I and, didn't know this about you. Yeah. Shocking. Yeah. yeah. I'm an open book, like okay, I said. Okay. Yeah. Continue. And, you know, and that was part of kind of the feelings of like, I didn't like who I was or what I was doing. Right. So you cheated. Yes. Okay. Well, that was your way of acting out. It was, it was, it was mental cheating that like, oh, okay. bas- like I didn't have sex with someone else, but it was, emotional. yeah, emotional going on a date. And it was, it was essentially like, I look back at it and it was like, I wanted to get caught, you know, mm, because totally. I, it's I, a very male thing. By yeah. The way, yeah. Cause like, I you don't, don't wanna... just break up with them. You, exactly. you do some passive aggressive behavior. Well, and it's like, okay, let me put in 10 times the effort to do something that's going right. to like hurt more in the long term than mm-hmm. if I was just direct and honest up front. Totally. And so that was that was an experience that I I very much learned a lot about myself from. Okay. And so, you know, I, I had all these things going on. And then uh, my track team in college got cut. So I basically kind of would come back from banking. Then I'd stay up till 2, 3, 4 a.m., do these Excel spreadsheets, but like for a college athletic department. Got that team saved. But in the process, I was kind of able to see like the power of the media and being able to talk to different journalists in Virginia, mm-hmm. figure out that there's some federal fraud going on, manipulation of endowments, all this stuff. Yep. And then went to town on on the athletic director at the time. Yeah, you got to put the notifications yeah, on. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to airplane. Right now. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, continue. And, uh, and so I did that. And I was like, you know, this is fascinating, the media aspect of stuff mm-hmm. like I love this I feel like this is a much better skill set for me and then rise of the retail investor happens and I was like you know what I don't know exactly what my plan is mm-hmm. but I know I don't want to be sitting in front of a computer for 18 hours a day totally. because that's not where my skill set is and there's yeah. one day particularly where it's like you know like living in New York City you live yeah. by yourself like it gets very lonely mm-hmm. and so I would go into the office during COVID and on my floor at center view there were normally probably 50 or so people there. Mm-hmm. And that day, there were only two other people, both of whom I had gone over to work for. And they each made over $30 million in the past few years, like it, a year, right? And so it's okay. like, that's like NBA player money. Yeah. And I'm sitting there, I'm like, these people are here working with like me, and they're mm-hmm. in the office when they could be, you know, at their vacation house, like with their wives, with their family, no one's forcing them to do this. I'm like, this is the life that I'm kind of setting myself up for. You're and building. exactly. And like I had two great parents who like worked very hard, supported me, but more importantly, like they were there for me growing up. Mm-hmm. And that's I think like one of the things about this city, like you being from the Midwest, you know, you get that, right? Like yeah. this is a place where it's a very workaholic culture. And I just kind of felt myself falling into that and was like, no, nah, I need to, I need to do something drastic. Mm-hmm. And I I have always known that I had a big personality. So I went from like 300 followers on Instagram to then like 800 after the track stuff. After you broke that 
track scandal. Uh huh. Yeah. And and so I'm like, all right, like I got a little mm-hmm. social media thing. Totally. Like, yeah. But but it was more I was getting comfortable with myself and showing different sides of myself on the internet, which I had never done because you try to put on an appearance for everyone else. And I'm yeah. sure this is something we'll discuss, but it was uh, it was kind of that was like the first nudge, and then okay. this opportunity happened. And at first, like, is how it happened was I go, I get my bonus, I walk in, and the the founder of the firm is in a Santa hat, and then the two kind of co-founders are there in elf hats, <laughs> and they slide a piece of paper across the desk to you. You flip it over, and you're supposed to act disappointed, like, oh, like you know, I should have gotten more. It's like that's the most amount of money I've ever seen in my life. I'm like, okay, I started laughing. And yeah. I go back to my desk. I pay off my student loans. I'm like, all right, I go on hinge immediately. And then right away, I matched with a casting agent. Okay. And so she was like, hey, I don't live in New York. And I actually have a boyfriend. But have you ever thought about doing reality TV? And I'm like, no, 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 no way. And then my childhood best friend was the one who kind of kept pushing me to do these interviews with him and everything. And then after a while, I got more and more comfortable with it. And I tell my parents, and this is like a week before I'm supposed to fly to the Cayman Islands. Yeah. So I'm still not sure if I'm going to do it. Mm-hmm. But my mom, who, so my dad is more conservative. He was in the military and he's a psychologist. And my mom, um, she's much more liberal. So I was thinking my mom would say, yeah, like, why not do it? And my dad would be like, no, 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 hell mm-hmm. no. But my mom was like, eh, I don't know. And my dad's yeah. like, honestly, you might learn something about yourself. Go do it. And at that point, I was like, all right, I got to go get more bathing suits because I only had one at that time. And then went to the Darien Sports Shop in Connecticut, took it from there. And, you know, like I, I had to rent a car because I didn't have enough tropical clothing. So I was like at malls in New Jersey buying stuff from like the Vineyard I love Vine how you're store. like so committed to the theme. Yeah. You're like I'm going to show up and show out. They, well, I knew that they wanted a stereotypical white guy in finance. And okay. that's what I gave them. You did. You mm-hmm. delivered. Mm-hmm. Which, I mean, that's kind of your MO. Um, going back to being a lawyer, mm-hmm. why did you – because, like, there might be people who are in law school or who are aspiring to be lawyers, but you became one, and then you never – really you're barred, right? Mm-hmm. You, you never actually became a lawyer. Yeah, why? well, I, I actually – I do – practice uh and and do a few various things for some friends in my free time okay so i i always want to be a civil rights attorney Mm. and i read a lot of john grisham novels growing up and really kind of that was what led me to go to law school and i always wanted to go to uva from his books and i got into uva i'm like okay perfect no brainer and then it was really, you know, you take out a lot of money, you're paying 7% interest on it. And I also like I got to law school. And when I was in undergrad, I focused kind of more on the athletics than I did on school. Mm-hmm. I got to law school. I'm like, everyone's smarter than me here. This is a very intimidating environment. Yeah. And so within a week or so, I had applied to the business school, fortunately got in, I was the youngest person in the business school when I went there. And, um, you know, really learned a lot. I'm like, I think I'm better at the business stuff. But Mm -hmm. I always had that kind of, you know, social justice side to my thinking of everything. Mm -hmm. And so I want to be a politician ultimately. And, you know, because I think there's a lot of, of social good that can come from when you have a voice. I think that's been one of like the really cool things about being able to have this kind of niche following of like mostly men in finance who, you know, have basically struggle to talk about personal issues. Like I think men in general struggle with that, mm-hmm. but specifically men in finance, cause you're supposed to meet this stereotype of like, you, you know, you very low emotion, you know, you're in it for the money, blah, blah, blah. But I mean, part of what led me to make these kind of big life decisions was I, um, I, when like things weren't going well with, uh, my girlfriend that I was dating, I started seeing a psychologist. Mm-hmm. And so I'd always block off Tuesday mornings for that. And I talked to the people above me at work about it. And one of the, and I, you know, I told him like, I, I, I need to do this every Tuesday and like, you know how crazy I am. And it was, it, you know, it was a fine conversation and, you know, there was nothing embarrassing or any pushback about it, but then Good. there would start to be pushback with the meetings. And I, I would tell people like, don't schedule anything with this, like, or I won't be there. This, this I'm going to pri- sacred time. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And then I started to notice that it was something that would get taken out at me. And then I heard that one of the people I was working under was saying comments about that. 
And it's like, okay, you can say anything about me. Like, I'm an adult. I can handle that. Mm -hmm. And like, I'm, you know, maybe too confident, some would say. But, you know, I, I know not everyone is like that. And totally. this, you know, and so to me, I was like, there's there's something to be said about this, that if I could go be a voice for these types of people mm -hmm. and, you know, people that that are my people and to kind of normalize anything like this, like even that small incremental effect of it, which I think, you know, has has definitely been able to happen a little bit like that to me is worth more than you know any amount of money that I'd be making I love that that's really cool I also think that another interesting thing about you and I know that we go on a million tangents mm -hmm. but that's just mm -hmm. like the beauty of podcasting. It's the ADHD both of us so you also when you went on to f-boy island you negotiated your contract mm -hmm. and I think that's so fascinating because I think a lot of reality stars come from like disin not all okay this is a stereotype mm -hmm. but there's a lot of people who don't know their rights and they're so desperate mm -hmm. to get onto a show mm -hmm. that they just sign any dotted line and they don't read it and then mm -hmm. their likeness is basically portrayed whichever way can you talk more about negotiating your contract before going on this show because i think this could be interesting for people and maybe you know, give somebody who doesn't have a voice a voice if they mm -hmm. were to ever go down that route. Yeah. And that was something I wasn't really aware of either. Um, mm -hmm. So it would have been late December. So like December 16th of 2020, let's say that I matched with this casting agent. So then after Christmas, I kind of have my first meeting with these HBO Max producers. And then we get into January and I could tell that they really wanted me. And mm -hmm. so then at one point, one of the producers let something go like, oh, well, would you be able to get off of work in three weeks? So then I'm like, I'm going to have to go to this island in the Caribbean in three weeks. So yeah. like, okay, you don't have any other options than me. Right. And I, I know that if they're picking me, they're trying to choose a white guy who works in finance, they can peg as the investment banker and all mm -hmm. that. And it's like, I don't think there's many other people who are like contemplating doing this. No, you know? and you're very shiny too. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so I kind of knew what I was walking into basically mm -hmm. with it. But that to me was the signal. It's like, okay, like, let's go negotiate this contract. And so at first, I was like, well, I'd really like to negotiate my contract. You get these 45 page contracts that it's like, you're selling away everything. You can't do anything for a year after blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And so they were like, well, no, we don't, we don't do that. I'm like, okay, that's fine. You know, I don't need to do this. I'll just continue to work because mentally I had, I, I think like in life, when you already make a decision in advance, you lose all of like your willpower to negotiate and and kind of anything holding you back and mm -hmm. it's always better to not make a decision before it's actually in front of you okay. so I never made that decision until basically it was presented to me but so I'm like all right I don't need this because I'm approaching everything from this perspective of if it happens great if it doesn't it, it's, a, it's a funny story to say yeah. the least right because like I don't even watch tv I haven't seen uh the last episode of the season I was on let alone the second season of it yeah. like I just you know I got better stuff to do yep. and so then they're like okay and then four days later they come back to me and I'm like all right well if you were to edit your contract what would you do and then I knew I had them yeah so then I go in and ed start editing the contract and like mark it up and everything and send it back and then I got what I wanted, but it was, okay. it was one of those things too, that I was the only person on the show as a male who knew that it was a parody of a dating show. Okay. No one else knew it. So like, yeah. I would tell these horrible sex jokes on it and, but I knew it's a parody. <laughs> so like I would go write down the jokes in advance. I'd memorize yeah. them before the date. Like it was just, it was so fun to me and I wasn't taking it seriously. And it was so funny to watch when you, how you come across and everything. And, but like, to then come back and like to see on the internet that people take it like as real, like yeah. that's who you are. And I'm totally. sure you get that too. 1000%. Right, mm -hmm. because like we're both aggrandized versions of ourselves, and in a very similar manner actually on the internet, but it's like people don't really get that. Mm -hmm. And people take stuff very literally. And like at first it would kind of be like, whoa, why do you like hate me? Yeah. And totally. I mean, I could get how you could look at me and hate me, right? Yeah. Like, I totally get that from a random person on the internet. But it was very fascinating, like, going from center view or, like, at Lazard. I worked on the 62nd floor of 30 Rock. Like, the first time I went in there for an interview, my ears popped. And I'm I'm in an interview trying to, like, unpop my ears because I've never been in a building that high. Yeah. And then I go to F-Boy Island. And, like, the best part of it was, though, like, growing up playing sports, like, I've been around, you know, in very diverse groups all growing up. But mm -hmm. then working on Wall Street you're around a bunch of white guys who went to Harvard or Yale and it was just like 
the same shit over and you go to the same yeah. places everyone's and i was dating the it's same an echo chamber exactly yeah you know and it's like okay here's another blonde from fairfield county connecticut like mm -hmm. you know which prep school did you go to xyz and like i was just so sick of it so then like yeah. i get around like these guys and we all it, you know and it was funny because at first like everyone's skeptical of me because i go to my suit yeah. guy like two weeks in advance i'm like i may Go on a reality TV show. <laughs> Your suit guy. And <laughs> that just shows how extra you are. Yeah. Sorry, it does. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, Arthur at Enzo Custom. He is yeah. uh, he's That's phenomenal. A plug. And that is a plug. But walking into a reality TV show from mm -hmm. like Wall Street, one of the most intimidating things one can do, because you're around like a bunch of jack guys who are like personal fitness trainers, yes. like, you know, and I'm like, what the hell did I sign up for? Okay, wait. So we need to get the perspective of you because you're a former finance bro. Mm -hmm. um, and now you're a CEO. Tell me kind of how you balance your professional life with your love life. Because obviously now that you're a CEO, I'm guessing, are you still as busy as you were as a finance bro? Or do you feel like you have more balance? And then how do you balance that all with dating in New York? Great question. I would say that I, so I honestly work less than I did in finance, but I have to think more. So it's okay. actual, it's harder work, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And it's much more responsibility because, you know, you can go screw up an Excel formula and whatever you get yelled at. Yeah. End of the day. But like this, I have people to support, you know, payroll to meet, stuff like that. And, and it's really dependent on my personal reputation. So mm -hmm. there's much more thought that goes into stuff. And yeah. I mean, I've fortunately been very successful in the risks I've taken in this business. I mean, I built this business off the back of a strip club, which was like, in hindsight, to take the risk I did was it all worked out in a phenomenal way hmm. but it's one of those things like I never when it, when I take a big risk I don't want to have a plan B because then you're never going to fail you're you're never going to succeed on plan A you're always going to fail because you know it's it, it, there's always this attitude of like a lot of people like to talk about stuff and and think about stuff and say okay well what if I did this or I have this great idea yeah. I was just like fuck it let's do it and yep. did it and it's been it's been phenomenal so it's been so much fun but it makes the dating like definitely tougher um okay. like you know even when we were going on our dates, it's like it's it's a lot of effort to like communicate during the day and mm -hmm. to prioritize that. Yeah. And so I I've kind of found that my dating life is it's very interesting. There's like one woman who I've known her for a very long time, and she's like relatively well known. So we kind of like have seen each other on and off. And she's basically who I cheated on my girlfriend with. Oh shit! And I'm sure at some point. Oh, the mistress is still. In the yeah, building. yeah. But now is she going to become like the full on girlfriend? I don't know if we're at a point for that. Mm. Um, I think like one of the actual, this is funny because one of the comments you said that I was thinking about on the ride over here yeah. was to start dating different types of people. And because yes. I've always kind of dated the same type of person running the same Which issues. was what? What was, was your type? White, blonde, like from like upper middle. Yeah, from Connecticut. Like just like, I don't know what I thought. What, in what my profession? Head. What profession? Uh, usually media. Like media PR, didn't you say fashion, fashion PR? PR? Yeah, That's I could sit and talk about fashion stage. PR like till Kingdom Come, like <laughs> okay, and not even not even like think about it, right? Because I always like to joke, and it's not necessarily a joke, but like I'm good on first dates, as mm -hmm. you know. Gets to like the third date, and then I start to kind of you know, then it's like okay, I have to then start removing my facade because we all do that. When of we course, date, everyone has one, right? And then uh, you know, the other individual starts removing their facade, and so I I felt like for at least maybe like the first year I came back from the island mm -hmm. that it's like you like going out, telling the story, having fun, doing whatever. And then now I'm kind of much more uh, methodical because I took a lot of time off of dating actually okay. to really sit. Cause it's like, I was going on like four or five a week at one point, not that's 28 lot. and 28 days. Okay, yeah. I know. Yeah. Guilty as charged, but, no, but still like, that's like five days yeah. per week. And the guy usually pays, yes. which is a whole different side of yes. it. Yes. And, but it's like, I'm going out with another like 22 year old from the University of Georgia and fashion PR. And mm -hmm. just like, this is the dumbest conversation of my life. Cause yeah. I've had with it peace four and love. times. With peace and love. Yeah. yeah. But it's not cause it of her. It's cause I've had it four times. Yeah. That week, it's not interesting right? anymore. Yeah. yeah. And so I'm just like, oh man, like I need, I need to do something different. So it took some time off. And then I think that was like very good for me to just mm. sit back, reassess everything. But you know, it's, um, 
it's it's been an interesting time. So I I'm kind of dialing back the dating because you got to find balance and everything. Like I think yeah. the one thing that I'm very pleased with with that is I've had much more time for friends and I've met people more organically and. Mm -hmm. I, I think I'm, I love like making jokes on Twitter about having hinge matches and blah, 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 and whatever. Yeah. But I think that the thing with dating apps, and I'd be very curious your opinion is, you know, you, you use a dating app and you kind of have your idealized version of mm -hmm. someone. Yeah. And then you come to find out like, maybe that isn't what I'm like, maybe I'm wrong, which, you know, is very rare in my life, but okay. no, I'm kidding. Yeah. Um, but you know, it's it, it, it kind of like, I feel like now I'm much more wanting some kind of organic uh meeting to happen through okay. mutual friends or at a bar or like something a setup like that. Exactly. Or, exactly. Yeah, or even IRL. if it's just, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. IRL in real life. So that's how I tend to approach it now. Yeah, I know that makes sense. So it sounds like Hinge hasn't been as successful for you. I've seen some of your tweets and I feel <laughs> like I think that oh, no. some of the things that women say to you, I don't like because you. OK, by the way, like this is me giving you a compliment. OK, like you're very attractive. You're fit. You have like a lot going on mm. in your life. You know, you're maybe intimidating to some women. And mm. so I think the tweet I saw was like, <laughs> you look like an evil prince or something. Mm. Mm. And it's like, do a lot of women when they're trying to like message you or match you on Hinge, are they like trying to dig at you? Is kind of, is that kind of the approach that you get? Because I feel like you're that type of person that's like innately intimidating. And so people might think they need to like knock you down a notch yeah yeah and i get that and mm -hmm. i also kind of like that like you I'm, like it I'm you think you're like it's playful for yeah, you. yeah yeah it's okay. fine like you're I like, like come at me yeah yeah okay. because, because because some guys don't like it some guys are like yeah come on man like i'm nice too and then get mm. defensive it sounds like you are yeah. having fun well but i i also know that like in my core i'm a nice person i could kind of like list things that would shock people of like what i do in my free time for my mm -hmm. friends like yep. that we've discussed yeah but there there are you know i I, I kind of set it up as like my dating profile, which you told me I needed a rework mm -hmm. of, you know, it's almost a screener, right? Because like I am a little obnoxious and I am sometimes yeah. like too much and I have too much energy and I'm annoying. Like I know that and I'm not for everyone. So I kind of view that as like the screener. Then if you can come mock me, make fun of me, like I'm into that. That's fun totally. for me. You know? I think you're like more like a puppy energy. Yeah. Or like yeah. a golden retriever type of energy. I don't think mm -hmm. it's annoying. I just think it's yeah. like energetic yes you've been um, around it that long so you know after a while it know. might it might yeah. start to wear uh -huh. um okay so are you are you dating right now for marriage because you're 31 years old but we live in new york fucking city mm -hmm. like where people i mean for men like they don't really have to think about marriage until probably like 37 is like my stereotype mm -hmm. so like what are you looking for I would say that I'm definitely dating for marriage, which is I feel like I can go and on a date like no within a minute. Okay, tell me more about that because I've seen TikToks where guys are like, like, yeah, like we know within like a minute or mm -hmm. like the first 15 minutes or whatever. Mm -hmm. I would love to hear more about that. How do you know? So what do you know? It, well, you can just tell the character of a person. Like, is this who I want to have my kids? Like oh, number shit. one, you go that deep right away. Well, I can just I like you can just tell from if one they're gonna go past the screener, be able to have like the EQ to kind of read me and understand me, mm -hmm. and then two, if you know I'm gonna tell stupid jokes and yeah. whatever, and then we kind of get into stuff more deeply. Mm -hmm. But like I really find that when someone goes deep into their story early on, yeah, it's like very authentic because it's it's you know I'm sure you, you having been on a lot of dates can just see through someone's like bullshit immediately yeah and I so try. I, i've been wrong a few times oh yeah you, yeah. are, are we gonna seen... get an explanation of what happened to was the guy married or what um i never found out if he was married okay. but he for sure was in a relationship got it it was just got like it. too much yeah the, too the, much women the hair extensions yeah that was and i didn't mention that there was like a ring holder on the girl side of the bed that's like meant for women's jewelry. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, I, hindsight's twenty twenty. Yeah. There was one time I I went on a date with a married woman because I'm like, oh, maybe you know I need to explore different things, mm -hmm. and so, so I jacked for... my age range yes. up. This woman. So what? How old? Uh, I well, I just did it to like sixty five or whatever the top oh is. Oh my god, Mark. So this woman, she ended up. Um, so. I should and I should have known this in the beginning because mm -hmm. in her in her hinge pics she was using an iPhone, but then the texts are green. 
So she was using, you know, I Google never Voice trust or a a burner. Green yeah, text. right. I it's think like, that's who are you? That's the first lesson. Never trust a green text. Honestly. Right? Like at the actually one of my friends had a uh, Android and we did a GoFundMe for to publicly shame him so he would just get an iPhone so it wouldn't God. screw up the group text. Yeah. And I still can't figure out how to get the money out of the GoFundMe. But uh how ADHD, much did you raise? $128. Oh God. Uh -huh. Okay. It's just trash. So if anyone knows how to get money out of a GoFundMe. Yeah, I don't think that they're listening to my podcast. Yeah. But maybe. Who knows? I mean who knows? Put it into the universe. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Exactly. So where was I going with that? Married woman, cougar. Mm -hmm. oh. What happens? So we go, we go to, and we go to the Mark Hotel on the Upper East Side. Okay. And so she uses this name, Ava. Mm. And so I'm saying Ava. And then she goes, it's actually Ava. I'm like, okay, I mispronounced it. That, that's fine. And then later in the conversation, she was like, you know, actually my real name is not that. And yeah. I'm like, you have the audacity to tell me how I'm mispronouncing your fake name. Like, come on, at least let me pronounce the fake name, you know, My correctly. Way. But she was so rich. She'd never cooked in her life before. Jogs up, takes a picture of us. And I'm like, oh, you know, they must have seen me from Paparazzi. season one of F-Boy Island eliminated like, the third I'm episode. Famous. Like, yeah. And then she gets this like deathly look on her face. She's like, I just lost so much money. Okay. And then I'm starting to think, oh, she's definitely still married. And then she's like, I'm in the process of finalizing my divorce. Okay. Which means she's still married. And so I guess the guy hired a private investigator, and mm -hmm. that was the last I heard from her. So, was she 65? No, she was 48, but looked 38. Great plastic Hot. surgeon. Hot. Yeah. I mean, like J-Lo's like mm -hmm. 50s, and she mm -hmm. looks amazing. Yeah. So who cares? Yeah. Um. Okay, so are finance bros really as busy as they say no. they are? No, no. Wait, tell me more. No. What? The, 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 yeah, you, you heard it here first. It's, you're doing Algebra 1. Like, it's this is not hard stuff. Why are they acting so busy? What it's, is it's it? It's a superiority complex. Is because it? so So what it actually is, though, is that for most junior bankers, you're in a position that you're not in control of your life, right? But in your, you're making a lot of money. Okay. And you're working for a lot of people who make even more money. So you kind of start to, you know, ascribe to be like the people above you. But you realize you're doing stupid fucking shit. What are they doing all day? Literally, you're in Excel just like typing on, on a thing and really? then saying, will do, thanks, like to the people above you. You're like in the team's messenger. Yeah, it's not creative. Selena. It's a, yeah. yeah, this is AI is going to have a lot of changes Bullshit. at the junior level. Okay. But then it's like, OK, you you put on this persona to the person you're dating and you want to come across this big, successful guy. Like, I'm going to have all this money, everything, because no one's doing that job because they enjoy it. They're doing it because they like money and they have golden handcuffs. And so then, and th I mean, I went through the same thing too, which is why I can speak to this, that mm -hmm. it's like, you have to kind of justify your own existence a little bit and understand why you're doing something. And, you know, it's, oh, it's because I can afford this nice dinner. I can go to Maria. I can do this. You can go to a Broadway show, yep. whatever. But that also, you kind of lose touch with yourself in it. And so you're, you know, at the end of the day that you're doing algebra one on an Excel sheet that really probably no one gives a shit about. That's going to be an output on a PowerPoint deck mm -hmm. that someone else above you is going to present and that person has been grinding 10 12 years in their life to do it and their marriage is probably horrible they never see their kids and there's always like this little inkling of like am i doing the right thing and like for me totally. i'm fortunate that like inside me something was like the voice kept getting louder and it's like this is you don't want to be doing this this yeah. is not what what you thought life would be but a lot of people don't have that. And, you know, you have to justify it in different ways. And the only way you can do it is because of the money you're making. And so, no, I mean, there's a lot of downtime. <laughs> Woo, Archie. There's there's a lot of downtime in the job. And that's, that's the thing. Like, most of it happens because you're getting comments from people above you because it's always this hierarchy. Yeah. And so you're getting these comments, like, later in the afternoon. So then you have to work later into the evening. But most people get into work at, like, 10, 9, 10 o'clock. Like, and they go work out for an hour during yeah, lunch. And, yeah. 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 And so it's like my dad wakes up at 3 30 a.m. My mom will wake up at 4 15 when she was working. And so I'm used to waking up very early. And then I start working in finance and it's like I would be the first one in the office at 8 45. Yeah. It was wild. Oh, shit. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's why you guys are able to drink every day. Yeah. Because yeah. you're not getting up at the exactly. crack of dawn. Yeah. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. What are some red flags women should watch for in men? And this is just like, this question just came to me, mm -hmm. but I'm like, if anyone can speak to this, it's Mark. Anyone who says they're a nice guy. 
And really? That was my Ooh, biggest I love that. issue with being a nice guy in F Boy Island. Is it's like I would never walk up to someone and say I'm a nice guy. And I like I, my childhood best friend. She's dating a guy who's mm-hmm. like I'm a nice guy. I'm like that guy's manipulative as fuck. Yep. Anyone who says that. Like, uh-uh. why are you saying that? Why do you need to Just say that? Judge nice. me by my actions, right? Action. Yeah. yeah, like, I'm not perfect. I'll sit here. I'll come on your podcast and tell you about cheating on my ex-girlfriend. Totally. Like, you can judge me for my actions of who I am now, but I'm never going to say I'm a nice guy. You know, yeah. like, that to me is the biggest red flag. Okay. Biggest. Any others? Any other, like, behaviors that you saw while within the walls of the finance world? So, I think one thing is that if – the the healthiest relationships I saw, the the female would always meet the male friends. I think if you oh. like, if it's a thir- like Thursday nights tend to be you know one if you have one mm-hmm. to kind of go out with your work colleagues and yeah. like if you're not invited or anything then and I and I say this because you can invite the girl you can you can it's, it's America choice. you can do whatever you want oh hell yeah okay so it's like why would you not want to yeah. invite her so yeah. you either don't want your friends to and. What I found a lot of it was is that everyone's like, oh, I need to be like, you know, banging a supermodel or whatever. And they don't want to bring, you know, their long term girlfriend around. And it's like, that's like, it was that's just like a normie. Yeah. That's so reflective on you, though, as a person. Mm-hmm. And like those tended to be like the girlfriends I got along best with because it was like they're great people, normal people. Mm-hmm. Like, but it's just kind of you get caught up in this culture and atmosphere of stuff that when you dial it back. We're, we're, this is all a joke. Like we're all yeah. normal people at the end of the day. Totally. Right? We're just in New York City, so yeah. it feels important. Yeah, exactly. So it's funny though because when I was getting, you know, more publicity and press mm-hmm. during my 28 day challenge, there are people who reached out to me and they're like, "What's your secret?" They're mm-hmm. like, "Like finance bros and like hedge fund bros usually only date like supermodels. Mm-hmm. And you're just like a normal girl." And I'm like. Yeah, there's no secret. I don't yeah. I think that's a stereotype. Like yeah. do you think like what percentage of these men are actually dating models? Cuz New York Very is little. crawling with models by the way. There's a lot of beautiful women here. Mm-hmm. Um but like how common is that? I mean <laughs> I, I <laughs> Uh, Come on, I'm, Mark, I'm recording. Be honest. Like I'm, I, I went on a date with a very well known porn star earlier this oh, week. Oh God! And I mean, I, why do I say it like that? That's it, amazing. But it's it, no, it's 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 great, right? Like, but I can never do that in banking. But the thing is, like, no one is doing that in banking. Like, you're working, and mm. also, like, when you do go on a date with a very attractive woman, like this woman is actually very intellectual and has like great side businesses, yeah. and stuff. But how'd you meet? Um, so we met through a mutual friend. Okay. So, and there's actually after you being like, you need to start dating other types of people. I'm like, oh yeah, porn star. Um, totally. That's, yeah. that's exactly what I was talking about. Uh, exactly. I don't know if my mom was too pleased when I told her, but, um, I, I think like the big thing that I've noticed is kind of confidence of the woman that like yeah. end of the day, like you could be the most beautiful woman in the world, but if you don't have anything to talk about, if yeah. you can't have an opinion on something, mm-hmm. what are you, what are you going to do? What, what's that meal worth that you're going to go spend two hours of your day to sit and drink expensive wine and to like not talk about anything, you know? Do you think though that men sometimes use women as a way to get more status? So mm-hmm. like, let's say a guy was nerdy his whole life mm-hmm. and then now all, all of a sudden he has money. Mm-hmm. Do you think like- That's exactly what it is. That's with a guy who's trying to find the model uh, and uh, is judging a girl by just her looks. Yes. A lot of people that I've noticed who do that were mm-hmm. people who were bullied at a younger age. Okay. And people who are trying to make up for it now uh, <coughs> that, yeah, he agrees, are because of prior things that have happened in your life that you're trying to correct or to justify to yourself or to make up for. And so I, I do think that a lot of the aspect of like kind of having arm candy or whatever is something that is appealing because that's just kind of the natural male culture. But mm-hmm. it's also something that's like, okay, you do that, right? And so you're married to someone who, you know, doesn't have your interests, you don't have hers, just so you can go to like Nantucket and like, you know, have like the picture perfect family. Like I read- But it's just a picture. It's yeah, just it's a just picture. a picture. And people see through that, you know? Really? It's like there there was this tweet that I did or I retweeted and it was like, you know, I can't wait to um, have 2.3 kids and two golden retrievers named- um, um, Northrop Grumman and Raytheon or something like that. But it's yeah. like this idea we have of the American dream is so it, – it's so empty. like – It's empty and it's not something that's true. Like if you look at, at like the happiest people, mm-hmm. it's going to be some of the 
two last people you thought would be together, right? Mm -hmm. Or, you know, the the relationships, like the ones that were the most stable from like higher ups I worked with were for people who had been with their wives for a very long time. Yeah. And I think an important thing too is a lot of people who kind of come out from, you know, wherever they go to school, they come to work on Wall Street and they've been dating someone for a long time and they're like, oh, I got to go like get some more. I, I got to live the life. And then yeah. they break up with their long term girlfriend. Then they start going through like normal dating cycles, blah, blah, blah. And then they want to go back to the long term girlfriend. She's found someone who's like understood themselves better yeah. and didn't want to do that. So it's, it's you know, it's very much a um, appearance type thing, I believe. But, yeah. you know, appearance comes before reality in a lot of cases. But I think that just the general stereotype, and it's like, Mo the, the, there's all these Patrick Bateman memes, and I love retweeting them and everything. But like, mm. that's not reality. Totally. But that is reality to a lot of people that they justify their existence. Like, that was a book written by a guy who hated his dad. And that was supposed to be something that was mocking his dad. And now that is like the aspirational, you know, person of yeah. this industry of, of a nonfiction book. What? And I'm like pro like finding a guy that you think is hot and you're attracted to. I'm not trying to like be anti that. Mm -hmm. But I love that you're talking about that you look at the whole person and mm -hmm. not just appearance. Because I think a lot of women get in their heads, especially mm -hmm. at the age of 30, where they like start to doubt themselves and lack confidence and it's mm -hmm. actually like the confidence that you exude yeah. is what's going to attract the guy. A oh, absolutely. That's why I think uh, what you're doing with the hinge profile, the prompts, mm -hmm. like to me now, I try and just go through and read the prompts first before really? looking at pictures. But I mean, like the human eye can make a, a split second judgment on someone when you're scrolling even. Yeah. But so I try and do it as much as I can because to me, it's like I have found that the kind of best times that I've had are like the best relationships that I've had have been with people who were not what I imagined. Yeah. And I think a lot of, I mean, it's, I'm 31 years old, so it's taken a while for me to get to that point and through a lot of stuff and some of it publicly. Mm -hmm. But it's been, you know, it's been something I'm very fortunate to have gone through that. What's the biggest difference between your online persona, which you said your business, your um, equity animal business was built on the back of a strip club. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that <clears throat> show, like I've, seen i've been following you now for two months and you know every friday like clockwork i see you yeah. posting strip club pictures and whatnot and by the way like i'm pro like sex workers i mm. i'm not gonna ever sit here and shame them mm. but you know when we were going on dates at one point you texted me and you're like i'm i'm posting this picture at a, a strip club but yeah. i'm actually at home reading a yeah. historical i was reading a book on austrian or... economics yeah okay see i don't <laughs> even know i was like excuse me yeah yeah so what I mean, is the biggest difference well, like the strip club thing, like I, uh, I, I really, before working with RCI Hospitality, I, I didn't like strip clubs at all. Mm -hmm. uh, like my brother has bachelor party at a Rick's location. And I remember being there and sitting on the edge of a friend group. So I learned to sit in the middle of a friend group. And it, you're talking to one of the dancers there and she was like, where are you from? I say New York. And she's like, oh, I've always wanted to see the Atlantic Ocean. I'm like, oh my God, this is so depressing. <laughs> and now like I'm friends with strippers. Like yeah. there's like one girl in Miami who I've helped her with her 401k, like starting an LLC. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, I, I feel like I've been very successful in bridging the worlds of Wall Street and Vice in a way that I knew would hit my target audience. Mm -hmm. And that's why the, kind of the IR stuff has worked out with them. But like I walk in a strip club, I'm nervous. Like I have a lot of anxiety just mm -hmm. as anyone else does, but I've learned how to control that through various ways and to not come across that way. Yeah. And so I, I think any of the normal thoughts that someone uh, would have in a situation like I'm having, yeah. I just know how to kind of put it out there. And I, I know too that for my personality, people are expecting a certain thing and I know how to give it, but yeah. that doesn't mean that's like, I'm not fucking sweating through my shirt underneath you know yeah so it's it's similar it's an aggrandized version i would say but i kind of i view a lot of it as a social experiment that i kind of throw stuff out there i see what hits i see what misses mm -hmm. whatever but most of it all I, I i think that having a very hyper because i did this knowing there was no kind of face to being a niche finance influencer mm -hmm. like there's a lot of anonymous accounts and all this stuff but there's an opportunity to do this because I really felt that if I were to do it and have a voice that then I could talk about things like the mental health aspect yeah. or talk about the relationship stuff and to be able to kind of show, hey, it's okay to have doubts about yourself. It's mm -hmm. okay to, you know, totally pivot your career, do go on F Boy Island, yeah. do whatever. I mean, if I could go from center view to F Boy Island and have things work out, like, you know, yeah, I'm not living in my parents' could. basement. It's like, great. Why not take a risk? I love it. 
Okay, so I now I'm going to ask you my listener question. Let's do it. Um, I had about a million people ask, <laughs> was he the CEO? <laughs> What's the answer? That was me. That okay. was me. Um, you heard it here first. This other guy asked, what was it like dating Marin? Or how were the dates with Marin? That's the exact the date. Well, the first two dates were really good. Mm-hmm. The third one. Which I planned. That you planned, yep. Warren. Um, that was uh, we we show up and it was funny because you, te- you it was a surprise and you're like we're going to this place that I'm not gonna say because I like cheeseburgers. Okay, you told me you like Burger King, yeah. so I was like, I he'll, know. he'll love this. Yeah, day. and it I was, was very thoughtful. sweet. But then yeah. I was like, I don't think she knows what this place is because like I just picked up a cheeseburger from there earlier in the week because it's by my office Mm -hmm. and I didn't want to tell you because it's like you know I know you you had kind of like planned it and everything and it's like okay and it it was fun but it was I mean it was kind of we're there it's like the uh because we had to get a milkshake as part of this thing yeah so it's like like a partnership yeah the whipped creams falling off on the table and it's just sitting on the table for like 45 minutes it was the worst service ever we were overdressed like I was wearing a dress yeah yeah, we were at this it like burger shack. Like, it was bad, but stuff like that, and I think like I always kind of like love when stuff goes wrong mm-hmm. on a date because you then handled you, it so well. Well, you learn how someone responds to something like that, right? Yeah. Like if I just like lost my temper or whatever, like you know, or made me you didn't make me feel dumb, <laughs> and then at the end they were supposed to give us the receipt and it was oh, supposed yeah, to be free. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you did I get was refunded. I did get you refunded, but I like quick was like I'm gonna pay for it, and he was so cute, and he just like handed them his card. You still got me an Uber home. You were so sweet. Like, you laughed it off. So, Mm -hmm. that's, yeah. yeah. I thought that was a good moment for you. I was, like, really impressed. Yeah, it it was fun. And I would say, I mean, I kind of, like, I reached out to you after seeing that Bloomberg article that Missy did. Because she did one of my articles. And so, then, um, and I had looked at your social media, you know, at that point. And then we go on a date. And normally I'll like heavily research someone beforehand, but like I read the article, I'm like, okay, I I kind of get the gist of stuff. And then afterwards though, I found it interesting and I almost kind of felt like a flashback to like the days right after F-Boy Island premiered because like some of my friends would be sending me comments and stuff about, and it's just like, I don't like reading what people have to say about me, especially if it's like, I know my audience and it's like, I joke around with them and everything, like, especially on Twitter, but it's like to, you know, from someone who I know how I come across and I know how someone could perceive that. It's like, I don't, I don't need this in my life. So I stopped kind of looking at everything that you were posting. Mm -hmm. So then after I'm kind of like catching up on like, Oh, what happened with, um, the, the guy with the hair extensions in the, Mm -hmm. you know, bathroom and stuff like that. So it was interesting because it's like and I would think a lot of people would probably have the same viewpoint on me to be you know going on dates with someone who's very public yeah that I think for a lot of people that can create a lot of you know potential insecurity or whatever whereas like for me I'm like I'm just not gonna look at it so yeah. it was it was fun though I had yeah. a good time good mm-hmm. no I I did too um okay how can this person now shifting away from me okay how can somebody tell if a guy is genuine when meeting for the first time I think asking them to talk about their parents. Ooh, that's a good one. Would you, I mean, it's also a sensitive one too. Like I was going to say mother, like, cause like I'll sit and talk about my mom till kingdom come. Um, but you know, not, not everyone's like fortunate enough to have, you know, traditional household, but I think asking them to talk about family members, right. Or pet related, or like seeing them have passion about something. Yeah. Like I think, I, I think the biggest problem like in modern dating is people think like you have to be cool and like calm, like, Totally. I'm not cool. You're you're not calm. Like you know. You said I'm not. Well, cool? Well, no, you're not calm. I'm not cool. You're definitely not that calm. Like I'm I, not a calm girl. He told me you like literally told me you're like you're like kind of anxious energy. Yeah. I can't help it. Yeah, mm-hmm. but then soon you learn to disguise it as like being cool, and people are like, oh, how are you smooth? And it's like you don't know what's going on. Underneath so it's like at I just, all. I breathe in and breathe out. Yeah. And you don't see that before I talk. But, uh, yeah, no, it's, it's like, you, you gotta be passionate about stuff and like mm-hmm. you, you have to have stuff you care about. But yeah. I think that's also a problem for a lot of people in finance is like, you're so stressed about your job and whatever, but it's like, think back to, you know, how would, as I view it, 19 year old self view you. Mm. And it's like 19 year old self would have been like, that guy fucking sucks seeing me as a banker. Yeah. But 19 year old me now would be like, yo, that's cool. He went on F boy Island. That's cool. He's it doing his cool. own thing. You know, that I can wear sweatpants to work and like 
do whatever. Do you though? I feel like you're always in a suit. Do you? Just, it was always days when I had meetings. Oh, okay. With you. Every time yeah, I saw yeah, you, yeah. I was like, "This no, guy's dressed was, to the was, nine. There was one, but like yeah. I sweat a lot during the day. That's the thing. So Jeez. like I had okay. to change in a different outfit when we went to the burger place. So, so that funny. yeah, you looked uh-huh. good. Thank um. You. Okay. So is he single and does he want to slide into my DMs? Who's so, that? What's her at? Um, Haley. I don't want to tell you. I'm, I'll tell you. You off tell me off camera. camera. Yeah. Um. So if people are interested in sliding in, like, are the DMs open? Yeah, DMs are open. I'm very, I'm very responsive. Are you? Yeah. Okay. Cute. Uh huh. Um. Okay. Do you guys look more at photos or at prompts on the apps? You kind of alluded yeah, to this. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think most are photos. Yeah. What are like the best photos? Are there any like don't do's from a man's perspective? So the first one, it, it's got to be solo or, or at least with someone who you can tell immediately is not you. Mm-hmm. Right. So it's like sometimes I'll see someone and it's like, I don't know if that's your brother, your current boyfriend, ex-boyfriend. Like, yeah. what are you thinking? You know, yeah. like that's just crazy. And then first photo, like not a bikini pic. Really? Then it, well, then it's like I'm going into it thinking like I can easily have sex on the first date. Oh, my God. Really? Yeah. That is a scoop. Yeah. So if the first photo is a bikini photo, you're thinking sex. But if it's mm-hmm. like the fourth photo, you're like, okay. Yeah, you're like, okay, she's, she, she knows. She's a good girl. Well, and she knows how to like do a good profile. Like she's okay. using her brain on this. Okay. Mm-hmm. How do you feel about when there's solo pictures of pets? I it, it depends. I kind of find it funny. Like if it's like the okay. last one, like I yeah. think that shows personality. You do? Yeah. Okay, because that's I a think, controversial one because some guys are like, absolutely not. Well, if it's a cat, like the immediate ex, so I just not The cat thing. people are going to come out for I, you. They're yeah. going to come. Yeah, I know. And it, well, they came for you at one point. I know. Um, I know. But I, I just, I'm not a cat person. I can admit that. That's not my thing. I think that's valid. And it's a good, if like you're obsessed with your cat and you mm. want the man to be also obsessed with your cat, then don't then put the cat because then he won't swipe on you. Well, and I think too, though, you know, focusing on cats specifically, Mm -hmm. um, it's okay to have a cat. Like that's fine. But you know, there's the association because the Simpsons of the crazy cat lady where like she got a law degree at Yale and a a medical degree at Johns Hopkins or or Harvard. And then she went crazy that we'd have these societal connotations of women who are obsessed with cats. And it's like, okay, just maybe, you know, the cat's in the picture, but you're in the picture too. You know, I think it's different with dogs, honestly, at least like from a male perspective. So that's my honest answer. I appreciate the honesty. Um, this person, this is a controversial question, but I think you, I think you can handle it. I wouldn't ask you if I didn't think you could. So this person said, ask him why anyone who is serious would want to date a man like him. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I would say that's like a really harsh question. That is, that is, but, but I, I put myself out there knowing that someone could have that viewpoint, right? Exactly. Cause you're online persona. Exactly. Yeah. But I would never want to even interact with someone who doesn't have the eq to understand that if if you think this is what i am 100 percent of the time yeah. like come well, on someone could say that someone could ask me the very same question mm-hmm. with 28 days exactly in February. exactly i'm sure they do and they right? do and so i was like yeah like it's just like of course i have my online persona mm-hmm. I'm building a business mm-hmm. but you know, like there's also many layers and dimensions to me. And Mm -hmm. I would say there's many layers and dimensions to you as well, clearly. Well, and I think there's two parts of that, right? Like it's one kind of like the like niche influencer type thing Mm -hmm. of people just reacting weirdly to someone who puts themselves out there. But I think a lot of that comes through jealousy because I think there is this uh, perceived connotation of like, oh, like you're just, you know, you're up on the restoration hardware rooftop drinking at noon and blah, blah, blah. And like, whatever. And it's like, no, this shit's like stressful. Like all, like, I mean, I'm under constant stress as I'm sure you are because it's like you've taken a risk on yourself. And at the end of the day, there's no going back on that. Like, not that I would want to go back on it, but that's... That's not something I was doing in banking. I could sit behind a computer and, you know, have a firm be my brand and whatever. You have the shield. Yeah. Well, yeah. Or like you put on your vest and you have, you know, your little logo mm-hmm. where you work. Like that matters. No one gives a shit. Yeah. But that breeds insecurity in other people who look at you knowing that, oh, there's a little bit of me that thinks I could do that. Or maybe I want to mm-hmm. do that, but I, I'm not going to do it. Right. Totally. So let me just go after them. But I think, too, that one of the things that I've learned is just and I have like a much more diverse friend group now than I did previously 
previously. And part of that was like, I only want to surround myself with people who kind of understand and have dimensions and mm -hmm. understand, you know, the duality of people. Yeah. And it's like, I'm very much an extroverted introvert as I feel like you probably I are. I am like, a thousand percent. I need, like, I, I got a kid who dropped out of school who works for me, who's living on my air mattress right now for a few weeks. And it's uh -huh. like, I, I need to just fucking go in my room sometimes and like- And sit. shut your door. Yeah, and just totally. like sit by myself, mm -hmm. right? Totally. Um, but it's, it's one of those things that, you know, everyone has different sides of themselves. Mm -hmm. And I think people show it in different ways, but people value themselves in different ways. Yeah. And what I've learned is that any kind of reaction to you as a person on the internet is more a reflection of the Them. individual making totally. that reaction. Like when guys tell me I'm like not hot enough to be doing this challenge, I'm like, yeah. honestly, you wish, sir. Yeah, Like with exactly. peace and love, you wish. Exactly. Like I had my my favorite one today because I get I get this sometimes, but like I, I used to get a lot more hate, but now like it's it's really it's more love. It's more like people being like, yo, like I, like I had a, a managing director who's now a partner that I work for at Centerview who, who like he takes me out to dinner. He's like, I just want to thank you for doing this because Aww. I like live through your life. Yeah. And he's like, I wish I could have done something like this. And like, Amazing. we, and it's like, yeah, I mean, maybe I'm just crazy enough to do it. But like, mm -hmm. this is, this is funny. So let me pull this up. Where is this? Uh, believing, I, I like posted some meme that was joking about climate change or something. And he goes, he calls me a soy cuck, woke, liberal beta male. And I click on the guy's profile and like, he has his girlfriend in the profile, like girlfriend of, and it's like, Oh, Yo. so who's the, yeah. yeah, and it's like, who's I mean, I could have read you from the comment and like, that's one of my favorite things to do. Like sometimes, it, you know, someone will say someone's like, all right, we're, we're going after you. But like, I love when people insult me on the internet. My favorite insult ever yeah. was melted Kendall dipshit. It's like, even like my mom loves it. Like, that's actually she'll, iconic. Yeah, yeah, she'll refer to me as that sometimes. It's just, it's so funny. I and it's like. It. All of this you stuff. You lean in, which you, is well, fun. You have to, but that's like life. If you can't laugh at yourself, you know, totally. what is life, what right? Is it? Mm -hmm. Okay, so before we go, mm -hmm. I want you to give my audience a piece of dating advice. It could be dating advice. It could be life advice. But because I am a dating podcast, yes. I love it to skew towards love in that arena. So I'm a hopeless romantic. Aw. And I, I felt at one point in my life that I was settling. Mm. And that that's kind of like what ultimately I've now unpacked with my psychologist about why I did certain things in my life. But I would say that a lot of people I know settle for stuff out of comfort. Mm. And because you think, oh, I'm getting older. I'm not going to be able to find the right person. I'm not going to be able to do the right thing. Yep. But I would say never settle for what you think you want because, you know, it's very chaotic in your late 20s, early 30s, mm -hmm. and you think, okay, I, I got to figure this out or else, like, yeah. I'm going to have to get my eggs frozen, do this, and blah, blah, blah. But, like, if you don't do that, you're just going to fall into the comfortable relationship, and then you're going to get divorced probably, like, statistically speaking. But you could take the risk now, push yourself. Like, mm -hmm. I've found more growth being single than I ever did in a relationship. Okay. Really find yourself, figure out who you are, and then, you know, you kind of manifest it. And once, like, you're ready, that right person will be there. Yeah. And things will come around. But I think don't rush it. There was, and I'll tie this into both of our audiences. When I was at Centerview, there was one Word document that was essentially the recruiting principle. Mm -hmm. And it was never appear desperate. So you're Ooh. interviewing a kid, never appear desperate. That you need them more I than they need that. you. And that's my dating advice. Never appear desperate. Oh my God, that's iconic. Mm -hmm. Do you think I appeared desperate when I did 28 dates in 28 days? Like, was that desperate energy? No, but I looked at it from my perspective. Mm. And I could see how that is like an easy dig and joke to make at yeah. you. Yeah. But I think what you're doing is very important for a lot of people to see, just as like what I was doing, mm -hmm. that it's like there's this very niche audience. Yep. And some of the voices will come from not that target audience. But like you're taking a risk. You're putting yourself out there. And a lot of people are learning stuff from you. Totally. So I applaud you for doing that. Thank you, Mark. Mm -hmm. Um, let's plug you. Like, where can people find you? Uh, my social media is all at it's Mark Moran. Um, LinkedIn, Twitter. I had a TikTok, but I had to delete it because I was Why? I was getting too distracted. I'd be just up on that at night, like, and the algorithm was so good. I know um, TikTok is like so addictive. It's so addictive. Then yeah, Instagram. 
DM me if you have any questions. Like I always love, like one of the things I would say too is, you know, sometimes I get messages from people like, oh, I saw you at the gym and I didn't mm -hmm. want to come up. It's like, come up, ask your fucking questions. Like I'll give you the answer about whatever. Like yeah. I've been through the ringer, you know, I got experience. Like I'm always happy to help. So mm -hmm. uh, yeah, feel free to reach out. Any questions? Um, I always like to be as helpful as I can, so. I love it. And I will just add one more thing. Like I, on this journey, have dated a lot of guys who kind of self-described as nice guys, mm -hmm. turned out to be complete douchebags. Mm -hmm. Mark was actually a good guy through and through. And I have the fucking best barometer. I like really trust myself. Mm -hmm. Like it sometimes takes me a minute, but you're actually a good one, Thank which you. is why we still are friends mm -hmm. and still have this relationship. That's why we're here. Yeah, exactly. Uh -huh. So definitely slide in ladies. Mm -hmm. He's a good egg. Definitely. Well, it's, it's, uh, it's great to have seen your kind of development with this and turn into what it is. So very Thank proud of you. you. This is awesome. Thank you for yeah. having me. Okay. Good. Awesome. Thanks again to our sponsor, First Rounds on Me. If you're tired of endless small talk with an overwhelming number of pen pals, go download First Rounds on Me now and get yourself a real date.